Kicking off the list at number 10, Lost Treasure. All right, listen up, you buccaneers. There have been so many shipwrecks all throughout history that right now, at this moment, there's about $60 billion worth of sunken treasure just waiting, just out there waiting for you, for you to put on your goggles and explore. Deep sea exploration teams have found a few recently. That's exciting. Back in 2012, we discovered the Port Nicholson, which was a World War II British merchant ship that sunk with 70 tons of platinum ingots. So many ingots. Ingots? Gots? Ingots. All the ingots or gits. That's over $3 billion worth of treasure. Not too shabby. Shortly after that, shipwreck hunters found the remains of HMS Victory, ironic name, which sank back in 1744 with a billion dollars worth of gold. It's not just finders keepers though. You know, as lovely as that sounds, this is not national treasure. Treasure belongs to people before and after the commute. When an American company recovered $500 million in gold and silver from a ship in Spain that went down back in 1804, they lost the rights to their treasure. They lost the rights to the treasure they found. That is so, can you imagine that? Guys, we're rich. Just kidding. The Senora de la Mercedes was a Spanish ship that sunk back in 1804. It was loaded with gold, silver, and spices, all the good stuff. It was found at the bottom of the Atlantic back in 2007, and these finders thought that they had 500 million. We're rich, and we can maybe, maybe pay off our student loans with this Money. Who knows? They were rich until the Spanish government sued the exploration team in 2012, taking all that treasure right back. All of this treasure. Yeah, not theirs anymore. Number nine, Magnificent Alien. How don't I talk about this little guy? Here we go. While the rest of the world was in panic mode, a new sea sponge was discovered in 2020. Named Advina Magnifica, which translates to Magnificent Alien. Literally, this thing's a little, little, little alien by himself. This sponge literally gets its name because it looks like E.T. And to be fair, yeah, it looks like E.T. Little phone home looking an ROV found this sample over 6,000 feet deep in the Pacific Ocean. They found it in what they called a forest of weird. That's just what you want to hear. Hey, how's the ocean? Oh, it's weird. Great. I'm not going to ask anymore. Just alien sponges sticking their ET heads out, hoping for some passing food. That's what the ocean is. Christiana Costello Bronco, the researcher who found this deep sea squishy, explains the discovery in an NOAA interview, saying, As all of these organisms are intricately connected, by documenting and describing marine biodiversity, we are building a better understanding of life and the impact of humans on Earth, and in this case, in the ocean. End quote. This little guy is the key to humanity's survival. I feel it. You can see it in his eyes, really. He's confident. Number eight, underneath Thwaites Glacier. We've seen some fascinating stuff here on Most Amazing Top 10, specifically underwater footage. We can't get enough of it. We love exploring the deep, as do you, hence why you're here. Hi, welcome back. Thank you. Hit that thumbs up. This next one, I honestly couldn't believe. It's actual footage from the bottom of an Antarctic glacier. This glacier, though, is the size of Florida. So if it collapses, our sea levels could rise 10 feet. So yeah, let's drill a hole through the middle and see what's up. We'll send a camera down, no problem. In 2019, researchers did just that. They drilled 2,300 feet through the Thwaites Glacier, dropped a robot with a camera down it, and saw this. Now this is the first time we've ever seen the grounding zone of Thwaites Glacier. Lead scientist Brittany Schmidt says this project is a dream come true. Yeah, no doubt. This is beautiful. She describes it as her walking on the moon moment. There's only a meter of space between the bottom of the glacier and the rocky seafloor. Would you swim underneath it? Be honest. I would. No, I wouldn't. I would do this and come back really quick. Number seven, the rare whale fish. Located in California's Monterey Bay, scientists were able to get a close look at a fish with no eyes. So he probably didn't know he was being filmed. That's just unfair if you ask me. This little guy over here relies on his other senses to hunt and pick up on its surroundings. This footage was from over 6,000 feet deep, so the lack of light just decided the whale fish doesn't need eyes anymore in evolution. Isn't that great when evolution's like, you know what, you don't need eyes. It's pretty dark, you're good. Give me them, jeepers creepers, give me your eyes. It's great to get footage of them because whale fish are rarely recorded in the deep, let alone recorded alive. This guy is alive and well, look at him go. Not too fast, not too slow, just, he's on his own pace, he's doing his own thing. Number six, not treasure. We kick this list off with some deep sea treasure, that's always fun, you know, until it gets reclaimed and your years worth of exploring goes to waste. But many deep sea ROV trips are not ideal, they're not fun. We don't always find a mammoth tusk or a glow in the dark shark. Sometimes we find barrels of waste. This dump site here was discovered off the coast of LA, 3,000 feet deep. These ROVs found around 27,000 barrels of waste. Yeah, you thought I was gonna say 27. That's pretty bad. Add thousands. The 2021 discovery was deemed staggering. Yep, I'd say so. You can literally see in these photos this aura of toxic waste like emitting from it. I don't see any ET sponges here. This is a graveyard. This is no good. ET wants nothing to do with this. Number five. 
Hydra Medusae. Sounds like a spell. Sounds like a Harry Potter spell. Another crazy deep sea alien fish. Here we go. Let's do it. I'm never swimming again after this list. During a robotic exploration of the Marianas Trench in 2016, which is a pretty good place to get some deep sea fishies, researchers found a new unidentified species of jellyfish. How fun is that? We mentioned the immortal jellyfish on here before. That's always a good time. The jellyfish that Benjamin buttons it. He ages backwards. That's cool. This is another crazy one. Just a lot deeper. At first, it had its tentacles spread out as if it was ready to, you know, catch some prey or some human or some ship. I don't know. It's ready for something. The tentacles act as a net. Catch prey, which is interesting. A fish that fishes with a net. How lovely is that? Also super alien. He was found near the Enigma Seamount at a depth of 3,700 meters. Hadra Medusa jellyfish has a translucent bell, which is the most intriguing part when you look at it. Oh, also its insides are glowing red and yellow. So yeah, did I mention alien possibly? Because maybe. Number four, deep sea hermit crab. The deep sea hermit crab. Do I have to talk about it? I guess I have to talk about it. Instead of carrying around empty gastropod shells like a hermit crab normally does, the hermit crab we imagine when hearing their name, these deep sea hermit crabs carry around sea anemones with them. Yeah, they just walk on stilts. Look at these dudes. I'm sorry, deep sea crabs on stilts? I'm all set. This almost was number one. This is almost worse than a spider. Let's pray he stays at the deepest depths of the Atlantic. Number three, deep sea pigs. It's not what you think, don't worry. It's not horrible. These guys are a genus of sea cucumber, but they have these little tube-like legs and they look really cute, which is why I have to include them. Cute, also a little bit weird. These ones look weirder than normal sea cucumbers, which is an odd statement to make, but I'll stand by it. They like to live on the seafloor where they move through the sediment searching for their next meal, and they eat by extracting tiny little particles of organic matter that have fallen from the surface of the ocean. So they're just there, just waiting for scraps, just looking around. How sad is that? So hungry. Sea pigs measure around four to six inches long. So yeah, they're, they're pretty cute. They're tiny guys. I'll admit it, they're cute. And they live at a depth of somewhere between 1,200 to 5,000 meters deep. So don't worry about any of these little piggies touching any of your little piggies when next time you take a dip because they're quite deep. Small but mighty, their skin carries a natural poison which would make them a horrible midnight snack, as squishy as they look. When brought up closer to the surface, they literally disintegrate. So don't try it if you see one. It's like the video of the raccoon where he tries to wash uh, cotton candy Andy, he puts it in and disappears, he's like... Number two, the deepest plastic. We're almost done here, so we'll do a sad one for a second last spot here, why not? Back in 2019, Victor Viscabo took a dive into the Challenger Deep, which is the deepest part of the Marianas Trench, and he found absolutely the scariest thing to ever see in the ocean a plastic bag. Yeah, you don't want any of this in the ocean, for sure. Some guy brought some spaghetti home for the family, tossed the bag out, now it's all the way down here, and he has no idea. Awesome. I will say Victor broke the record for deepest dive, which of course is amazing for, you know, science, research, and advancements, and all that jazz, of course. But I feel like the more we discover and the deeper we go, the more we realize that we're inevitably doomed. And finally, number one, the deep sea anglerfish. So scary. Here we go. Let's end off on a scary note. Even scarier than pollution. It's not. Close. The deep sea angler fish is just a sample of how terrifying the ocean can really be. We have no idea. It's also the most fascinating fish I've ever seen in my life. Living at depths of over 6,000 feet, the angler fish lives in complete darkness. It was first discovered back in 1833 when it washed ashore somehow in Greenland. And then it was studied in Denmark. It was first referred to as the football fish or the man gobbler. Man gobbler is honestly more of a, yeah, I, I could definitely see that. The sea devils have quite the smile, but they don't often get a chance to show it. You know, being that deep and all and in the darkness. Finding prey that deep below the surface is quite the task. The ocean life is also quite sparse when it comes to meals of your choosing. Like I said, some of these guys have to just rely on just particles falling into their mouths. This is why it's often referred to as the fish that fishes. And it's all thanks to that little disco ball of death right here on the forehead. Female angler fish have a glowing lure on the top of their head and it's awesome, it's beautiful. This light is created due to bioluminescent bacteria. Thousands of fish have it and the deep sea angler fish uses it to hunt. It draws fish in right in front of its massive mouth and then they see the light and then moments later, bam, they see another light, the light of the fish gods. RIP, rest in Pacific. Hmm, not, not bad. All right, let's get into today's list. Starting off at our number 10 spot, we have the deepest known shipwreck. Who knows how many shipwrecks lay in our oceans, considering many of them have yet to be found. The USS Johnston was a US Navy destroyer, which sank during the Battle of Samar in 1944 after a battle with a large fleet of Japanese warships. Victor Vescovo, who is one of the few people who have made the dive into the Mariana Trench, was one of the people who first stumbled upon the remains of this sunken 
warship. The ship's remains were first found in 2019 and it is now known as the deepest known shipwreck as it was found 6,456 meters deep in the Philippine Sea in the Pacific Ocean. Victor, who led the expedition, said, quote, The wreck is so deep that there's very little oxygen down there, and while there is a little bit of contamination from marine life, it's remarkably well intact except for the damage it took from the furious fight. End quote. This ship is so deep it took a few dives in order for them to be able to relocate the ship, which they have now been able to do entirely. There were 327 crew members on board this ship during the battle, and sadly only 141 of them survived. The diving team was sure to be respectful about their mission and laid wreaths both before and after their dives, which is just a nice note to end off this point on. In our number 9 spot today, we have the Baltic Sea Anomaly. In 2011, while searching for treasure in the Baltic Sea, these divers came across something super weird. It was a 70 meter long object laying 300 feet below the sea, and to this day, no one knows for sure what it is. It's a massive disc shaped metal object, and while it certainly is weird to find a huge underwater structure that no one can identify, the weirdest part about this story is that those who found it claim that their equipment stopped working only when they were around this massive unknown structure. There was some sort of electrical interference, but only when they got close or directly above it. Some people believe it's either a glacial deposit, which is the result of thawing glaciers, or an alien spacecraft. I'll let you guys decide on this one. UFO or glacial deposit? I'm gonna go with UFO because that is way more exciting. In our number 8 spot today, we have a USO. Daryl Miklos is an explorer who took a deep dive following maps that had been put together by his friend and former astronaut Gordon Cooper. The map Daryl was using was initially made to help identify more than 100 magnetic anomalies in the sea. During one dive at a location within the Bermuda Triangle, he thought he was going to find an ancient shipwreck, but instead found something that continues to stump researchers and Daryl himself. He came across a very strange structure that wasn't like anything he had ever seen before. This structure had long obtrusions which stuck out from its sides, and the whole thing was covered in corals, so whatever this thing is, it has been down there for hundreds, if not thousands of years. Daryl has said, quote, There's identical formations in three different areas, and they don't look nature made. They don't look man made. Certainly nothing I've ever seen based on my experience, and I have years of experience at doing this. We've identified multiple different types of shipwreck material. This doesn't match or look anything like that. End quote. People have started speculating that this structure may just be the remains of a crashed UFO. If it isn't, then what else could it be? I'm feeling open to suggestions, so let me know. In our number 7 spot today, we have a giant squid attack. While diving into the deep sea in a submarine, there's quite a few things that could go wrong. Some are certainly scarier than others, but I'm going to go ahead and say that being attacked by a giant squid is somewhere on the list of bad ones. Maybe not life threatening since you're in a submarine, but still absolutely terrifying. That is what happened to a pair of Greenpeace submariners while on an expedition in 2004 in the Bering Sea between Russia and Alaska. The squid sprays ink and is clearly quite stressed out, which I'll admit is actually kind of sad to see. It isn't quite clear exactly why the squid was in this area, as it is quite far north for its usual habitat, but it was there nonetheless. Researchers aren't exactly sure what kind of squid it was for sure, but all they know is that it was very, very large. I think it's safe to say that those people were glad that they were in a submarine that day. In our number 6 spot today, we have the massive siphonophore. Okay, I'm not saying that this is going to be scary to everyone, but I'm not gonna lie. Knowing that things like this exist in the deep sea is absolutely terrifying to me. So there are these things called siphonophores that exist in the ocean, and they appear to be a singular multicellular organism, but they're actually an entire colony of polyps and medusoids that are collectively known as a zooid. So a few years ago, scientists found the longest siphonophore they've ever found, and it was a whopping 154 feet long. Yep, just a huge long piece of a bunch of different little creatures all working together. I don't know why it freaks me out so much. Maybe it's because it's a bunch of creatures that all seem as though they share a brain. Maybe it's something I just can't comprehend. Or maybe it's because this thing is 154 feet long. Regardless of whatever it is, the deep sea is just as fascinating as it is terrifying. In our number 5 spot today, we have dying coral reefs. In 2009, after a 4 week expedition to explore the deep ocean just southwest of Tasmania, while there were many exciting discoveries, there was also one that was much more grim. The scientists 
has found deep water coral reefs, but in the same moment as the excitement came the realization that these coral reefs are dying. There needed to be much more research into exactly what was causing the reef systems to die, but the worry was that whatever the cause was would extend into the shallower reefs as well, which would cause massive problems for both marine life as well as human life. Scientists needed to figure out whether the coral was dying because of ocean warming, disease, or increasing ocean acidity. Whatever the cause, if it were to extend into the shallower coral reefs and cause those to die off as well, 25% of marine life would lose their habitat, the coastal fishing industry would collapse, coastal tourism economies would shrink, coastlines would erode, we wouldn't have the same access to submarine animals which have helped us with medical breakthroughs, and honestly the list just continues on. So while this one might not currently seem like a scary addition to this list, it could have many more implications than we are even aware of. In our number 4 spot today we have this deep sea feast. As it turns out, deep sea feasts are quite a horrific sight as this video footage from a deep dive expedition will show you. This is the scene that scientists were welcomed to on a deep diving expedition that took place in 2019. What you are seeing is dozens of octopuses mercilessly devouring the 4-5 to five meter long remains of what is believed to have been a baleen whale. Their meal includes some of the internal organs, while large scavengers are stripping away the flesh and those good old zombie worms are diving into their favorite meal, the lipids and fat from the bones. While this is a grisly sight, I guess it's nice to know that nothing goes to waste in the deep sea. In an environment where food is scarce, this must have been a pretty big win for all of these creatures. Still, seeing video footage of it is pretty wild. In our number 3 spot today we have the long arm squid. The long arm squid is not often seen and thank goodness for that because they are so unbelievably freaky. They can be found in many different oceans, but they live in the permanently dark zone of the ocean around 1,219 meters or 4,000 feet deep in the sea. On November 11th, 2007, as an ROV was searching around the deep waters in the Gulf of Mexico, it was able to catch one of these guys on film. While there is still a ton that remains a mystery about these elusive creatures, it is believed that they can grow to be around 23 feet long or over 7 meters. The real creepy stance that these guys have is when they hold out their extremely long appendages perpendicular to their body which creates a sort of elbow look. I don't know, just freaks me out. Imagine waking up and having a giant squid with elbows floating around your room. I know that won't happen, but I'm just saying, imagine. In our number 2 spot today we have a squid graveyard. During a 2012 expedition into the Gulf of California on the sea floor, scientists came across a ton of squid carcasses and squid egg sheets, which was a bit of a scary sight, but they made a note of it, captured their footage, and just continued on. In 2015, when they returned to the same area, they found even more, and now they really had to ask themselves, why was this happening? Well, they then took a look at the squid's life, and things started to make a little bit more sense, although it is still unclear. So, many species of squid will see the adults all join in large groups to spawn and lay clusters of eggs on the sea floor. Shortly after this, many of the adults pass away. This isn't the case for all squid, however. There are some mothers who instead lay their eggs in an egg sheet, which they keep between their arms for months. When the babies finally hatch, the mother will then drift her way down to the sea floor. So this answers the questions why the squid died, but it doesn't answer the question of why there were so many bodies in one specific zone, and the answer to that still remains a mystery. This is however an important part of the underwater ecosystem as these squid carcasses then become food for the other animals that live in the area such as crabs, sea stars, ratfish, and other crustaceans and bottom dwelling scavengers. In our number one spot today we have the guardians of the underworld. I'm here asking you why there are so many insanely large creatures in the deep sea. I know, deep sea gigantism, but still. Why? So here we are talking about another insanely large creature, this time it's a jellyfish which has been nicknamed the guardian of the underworld. This creature can reach 10 meters or 33 feet in length and despite its enormous size, it isn't usually caught on camera. Thanks to the M. Bari's ROV however, more video footage was able to be captured of this amazing and terrifying jelly. In the 27 years that the M. Bari's ROV has been patrolling the deep sea, they've only observed this animal 7 times. 
So it really does feel kind of special that we get a chance to take a peek at this thing in its natural habitat. While those long billowy things coming off of it appear as though they would be stinging tentacles, they're actually more like arms that help with feeding. It is thought that they use these massive arms to envelop their unsuspecting prey and that was all I needed to hear to swear off the ocean forever. The red colouring of these jellies helps them blend into the dark backdrop of the sea making them a perfect predator. A member of the Embari team said, quote, it's one of the largest invertebrate predators known in the ocean, yet little is understood about its ecology and behaviour, end quote. So like many of the other deep sea creatures on today's list, there is still so much more to learn about these guys. Kicking off the list at number 10, glow in the dark shark. Yeah, you thought left shark was the coolest fish in the pond? Think again, pal. Glow in the dark sharks, apparently we got them. Terrifying. Two years ago, scientists were able to identify three deep sea sharks. The kite fin, the black belly lantern, and the southern lantern shark. All three of them look like they're from Pandora. They're glowing. They're literally glowing. Bioluminescence is fascinating. We mentioned the deep sea angler fish in part one of this list. So now we've got glowy gill Gary over here to worry about. Awesome, I'm never swimming again. These sharks were found in the twilight zone, around 1,000 meters deep off the coast of New Zealand. Yep, never swimming again, ever again. Let's move on. Number nine, the frilled shark. Another scary shark, awesome. Back in 2004, marine biologists discovered this dinosaur, the frilled shark, if you wanna call it a shark, okay. It was lurking about 870 meters below the surface. This one looks like an eel, almost. It's so scary looking. Oh, I hate this, I hate the ocean. Frilled sharks can grow up to seven feet long and they fight like daredevil. They can hunt in complete darkness. They don't need to see anything to whoop your ass. Remember that next time you're uh, skinny dipping. Mm -hmm. Unless you can hold your breath for a seriously long time, you won't run into the frilled shark anytime soon. They're only found about a mile below the surface, so sleep swimmingly tonight. Number eight. Black dragonfish. All of these fish are so scary looking, and no, not all of these things are fish. Just a few off the hop, because, ooh, get them out of the way. The black dragonfish is the first time scientists have found an ultra black deep sea fish. This thing is awesome, I love this. The black dragonfish literally has the word dragon in it, and I'm not surprised. He fits it, he fits the picture. These little guys can be found at depths of 1600 feet, and you'll see this one coming towards you, as these fish too possess bioluminescence. If you can't tell from these photos, um, they also have teeth. They have big, scary, dragon-like teeth. Even Khaleesi would see this and be like, no, no, I'm good. Number seven, Apollo 11. They say space and the ocean are pretty similar, but nobody expected to find this. The engines of the Saturn V rocket that fell off during the Apollo 11 missions. They should have never been found, realistically. The odds here are just mind-blowing. Right off coastal Florida waters found 16,000 feet below the ocean surface. These things are massive. They're so heavy we could barely get them out of the sea. You know who found this thing laying on the ocean floor for more than 40 years? Jeff Bezos. Yep, Amazon CEO Jeffrey Bezos. J bees. He found this. He found these back in 2012. What's the shipping fee for a couple of Apollo 11 rockets? It's probably not cheap. Number six, USS Johnson. Once a US Navy destroyer, the USS Johnson sank during the Battle of Samar back in 1944. It sank after a battle with a large fleet of Japanese warships. Victor Vescavo, one of the few to reach the Marianas Trench, was the first one to stumble upon the remains of this sunken warship. The remains were found quite recently, back in 2019, and it's now known as the deepest known shipwreck of all time, which is a weird brag. She was found 6,450 meters deep in the Philippine Sea in the Pacific Ocean. To quote Victor, who at the time was leading said expedition, he says, the wreck is so deep that there's very little oxygen down there. And while there is a little bit of contamination from marine life, it's remarkably well intact except for the damage it took from the furious fight, end quote. The ship is so deep that it took them a handful of trips just to locate the thing entirely. There were 327 crew members on board the ship during the battle and sadly only 141 of them survived. The diving team was respectful about their mission and they laid wreaths both before and after their dives, which is just a nice thing to note off at this point, honestly. Number five. Underwater civilization. As we found out in part one of this series, the ocean, being mostly undiscovered, is terrifying. Yep, never going in it again, for sure. But discovering a long lost civilization underwater, okay, I'll admit, that's not scary. That's actually kind of cool. It's pretty neat, we like those. Found 65 feet below sea level off the coast of Sweden. Researchers from Lund University found a Stone Age civilization that dates to around 9,000 years old. They found artifacts that are in great condition, all things considered. They even found an elk antler ax. How epic is that? That's some Elder Rings kind of stuff right there. That's some good loot. Some of these discoveries, they still have to work out. They're not even sure what they found. What researchers do know is that this 
this ancient civilization, they had a healthy life based on what they found. There's lots of food. Findings suggest that it was warm out often. It was great and all, you know, until the sea rose up and swallowed the Swedish lagoon. The forest surrounded lagoon just ceased to exist, and we're not really sure why. The more ocean we discover, the more we learn about our past. And if we can also find treasure along the way, that would that would be helpful. That'd be great. Number four. USS Nevada. The USS Nevada was lost in 1948 and it wasn't until a year ago where she was seen again. Yeah. The USS Nevada was referred to as the unsinkable ship and here's why. During the 1941 attack on Pearl Harbor, the USS Nevada was the only battleship to get away in one piece. But Barely. It took years of repairs after that, but she returned to battle later in 1944 to support the Normandy invasion. A year later, it assisted in two atomic bomb tests, and post-World War II, she was finally deemed too ancient for service. So the Navy used the USS Nevada as target practice, and it took them five days and lots of power to finally sink it. How impressive is that? They almost couldn't sink the ship when they tried. That's kind of brilliant. The torpedo was the final strike, and after it sank, the Navy wasn't even sure where exactly it ended up. It was more than 15,000 feet below the surface, so it could have gone literally anywhere. Cut to only a couple years ago, a joint expedition by Ocean Infinity and Search Inc. led by Dr. James Delgado, they found her. Just 65 nautical miles southwest of Pearl Harbor. All the way down. Number three. Amelia Earhart's plane. Yeah, you heard me. How epic is this? The first woman to fly across the Atlantic, she was well on her way to settling even more groundbreaking records, but her plane tragically disappeared over the Pacific in 1937. It's since been a great mystery where the final resting place of Amelia Earhart now is, but we may have actually found her remains back in 1940 on the Pacific island of Nikamuraro. The initial examination of these remains were reported to be that of a man. That was the general idea in 1941. But come 2018, we have a different idea now. Now, some things come up. Researcher Richard Jantz took another look at the long lost remains, and since then, photos of Amelia have surfaced, so Richard compared the bone measurements to her body type, and we're pretty sure that's her. But in a recent discovery, May 2021, a murky image went viral, and many believe it's Amelia Earhart's plane submerged in Nikumaroru Lagoon. Back in 1991, part of a plane fuselage was recovered, but it was too damaged to confirm that it was her plane from when it went down in 1937. Do we think it's her? Sound off below. I I do. Definitely. Or else someone else's remains are out there, and that's also wild. Let's discover who that is. Number two, crop circles. Before we end off this list, we'll get a little cute, dare I say. Crop circles on the ocean floor. Are these aliens, alien fish? Do we have this now? Is this a scary shark? What's going on here? These crop circles were first spotted back in 1995 off the southern coast of Japan. And for 16 years, these things were blowing the minds of divers or deep sea explorers. Nobody knew where they were coming from. They would be there one week and then the next day would be gone. Tiny aliens or tiny puffer fish. That's right, in 2011, one of these dudes got caught in 4K, and it's one of the weirdest things I have ever seen. I had to squeeze it in some sort of deep sea list. I love showing this little guy off. These male puffer fish, they try and lure in the ladies by making art. Some birds dance like crazy, some fish make art, okay? Animals have souls, deal with it. The thing that baffles me here, con concerns me if anything, is that these puffer fish use a shell. They use a shell in their mouth, they, bump, they grab it, and then they scoop out these designs. He uses a tool to carve away his emotions. Small but mighty, and also an artist. And finally, number one, squid graveyard. During a 2012 expedition in the Gulf of California, lurking all the way at the bottom of the seafloor, scientists came across a bunch of squid carcasses and squid egg sheets, which I mean, you know, in your working day, that's a lot to see, just going along and all of a sudden you're like, oh, yikes, okay. But anywho, once they took photos, they got footage, all was good, they returned. Come 2015 though, that's when these deep dives get a little mysterious. When they returned to the exact same area, they found even more carcasses and even more squid egg sheets. What's going on? Why here? Is this like a hot spot? So many questions. Many species of squid will see the adults all join in large groups and lay clusters of eggs in the seafloor, but shortly after this, many of the adults will die. Nature is cruel. This is the case for most things. But it's not the case for every squid, however. There are some mothers who instead lay their eggs on an egg sheet, which they keep in between their arms for months. And when the babies finally hatch, the mother will then drift her way down to the seafloor. So this answers why that squid died, but it doesn't answer why there's so many bodies and so many types of squid births and stuff happening in one specific zone. And that answer still remains a mystery, hence why it's our number one today. At number 10, we have an octopus nursery. Eight-legged alien looking things with suction cups all over their arms and beaks for mouths. Octopus are creepy looking things and to top it all off, they can camouflage like a navy seal and they are super smart. If these are the kind of things that make your skin crawl, then just running into one of these guys 
says would probably freak you out. Well, on the underwater expedition at the Davidson Seamount, there was a rather shocking discovery. They had a remote probe that was on the ocean floor around 10,000 feet, and they came across which seemed to be an octopus that was next to not just one, not just two, but a group of 1,000 octopuses in a nursery. They were all there laying their eggs and using the heat from the volcanic vent to keep them warm. I would hate to be the guy who accidentally steps into that crack and then gets devoured by thousands of sticky arms. But if you're at 10,000 feet underwater, you probably are already screwed. At number nine, we have the Siberian Lake Monster. Of course, if we're doing a list of scary things that live underwater, we have to throw a giant mysterious sea monster on here. What separates the Siberian Lake Monster from other more popular guys that we have seen like Loch Ness and that kind of stuff is that underwater scans have actually picked this guy up. This thing is deep in Lake Labincure and some radar has shown that it looks like a 33 foot long creature is living there. Now this is probably just a skeleton, but if this thing is dead, it means that there was once a giant man eating monster in this lake. I thought we were supposed to be safe in fresh water. They've nicknamed this thing the devil, so you know he's a good time and loves company. So next time you go up to the cottage and you're swimming in the water and you feel safe, remember there might be a giant monster lurking underneath the water ready to turn you into a side dish. At number eight, we have the blue hole. Now there are several blue holes in the world. There's one in Belize, there's one in the Red Sea, there's a giant one in my heart that was left there from when Reboot ended on a cliffhanger. How are you going to end a show that so many people fell in love with on a cliffhanger? I will never trust again. Well this one is between Cape Verde and the Caribbean islands. Scientists are really confused about this thing. It's a crack in the bottom of the ocean floor and it's several thousand miles long. What's strange about this is there's no explanation of how this happened. It might have been tectonic plates moving around, but when this happened the earth will probably start to repair itself and there's been no sign of this. My theory is this is where Godzilla goes to sleep at night. I mean it seems like the most logical answer. It's either that or the gateway to hell. Like come on guys, I'm doing real science work here. At number seven we have the Yanaguni complex. This was discovered by scuba divers in the 1980s. I think that's the scariest part about this one. Could you imagine going scuba diving back in the 80s? The technology back then must have been a tube going up to some guy who would blast fresh air down to you using a bicycle pump. I don't even think they had decompression sickness figured out back then. The chances of you coming up the bends was probably super high. Well if it wasn't for a few divers in Japan who were willing to sacrifice it all to look at some cool stuff, we wouldn't know anything about the Yanaguni complex. It's still a mystery as to what this thing is. It looks like some temples that might have existed thousands of years ago, but when the ice age decided to melt, it would have covered this entire area. This could be why an entire civilization got plunged underwater. Or the temple could have been on a cliff, and then when a massive earthquake hit, it knocked the temple into the water. But like everything in life, there are some haters who say this whole thing is just a natural rock formation. Some people just want to ruin everything. At number six, we have Anacora Sista Twista. One of the reasons why the underwater world is such a mystery is because we find things like this in there. Sure, there are beautiful things down there like bright fish and chubby marine mammals, but there's also the unknown, unidentified organisms like Anacora Sista Twista, which should be the name of an 80s hair metal band. But what is this thing? Well, it's a protist. And what is a protist, you may ask? Well, it's an organism that doesn't belong to any animal group, fungus, or plant group. What does that mean? I really have no idea, you guys. I think it means it could be an alien. Some alien came down to Earth for a swim and then scraped its knee on some coral, and now we have alien creatures running around the ocean, probably waiting for you to pee so it can swim up your pee hole and then work its way into your brain. It's really the only logical answer. At number five, we have the Bimini Road. How were the pyramids made? Was it aliens coming down to share their technology and secrets with us? Or was it just thousands upon thousands of slaves who sacrificed their lives and their spines to build them? Well, we don't know and we may never know, but the Bimini Road is another one of these mysteries. It's off the coast of the Bahamas and it looks like it could have been a pathway that was placed perfectly with giant slabs of rock. Similar to the way the pyramids were made, it seems that these large slabs of rock were too large to be moved by man and also like the pyramids, these these giant slabs were also perfectly placed so well, so where does everyone's mind go when something like this happens? Well, magic or aliens. The logical answer is that this is a natural phenomenon of the water moving and hitting the rocks to make these formations, but people think that this was made using advanced technology from aliens and could have been the road to Atlantis. Honestly, I like the Atlantis theory much better, it's more fun. At number four we have Colossal Squid. Yeah this thing is a big no thanks for me. So everyone always talks about how there might be sea monsters out there, but this thing 
actually exist. There's never been one caught alive, but several have washed onto shores dead. And they are massive. The largest one ever discovered was 45 feet long and it was dead. So you know there was an even bigger one out there that killed this guy. They don't even have suckers on their tentacles, they have hooks. Let me say that again. This squid has 10 giant arms covered in hooks. This thing is straight out of a horror movie. Scientists aren't even sure what something this big eats. They think it probably feeds on whales or your deepest darkest fears. I wouldn't be surprised if the colossal squid works part time as a gatekeeper for hell. It makes me think that the old Greek stories about the kraken might have been real. At number 3 we have underwater circles. Giant formations of circles that are formed underwater and nobody knows how they got there. These mysteries were discovered off the coast of North Carolina, Florida and Belize. Now what are are they? Like many things on this list, myself and the entire scientific community have no idea. But here are some theories. Maybe they were formed naturally by either two things, water currents or some sort of animal mating ritual. Another idea is that these things were made by ancient civilizations before the ice age. All these things would have been above ground and might have been art left over by some old timey tribes. And the third theory is that they look kind of like a bullseye so it might be some sort of nuclear missile target and if you hit it hard enough the explosion will cause some sort of major natural disaster like an earthquake or tsunami or if we're lucky both. At number 2 we have Megalodon. Megalodon. If you have a fear of sharks you're gonna love this one. Megalodon was a prehistoric shark that was even bigger than the giant hook tentacle beast that was earlier on this list. If you've already forgotten about the colossal squid it clocked in at around 45 feet long where Megalodon was closer to 60 feet long. It was a 60 foot shark that could probably rip a blue whale in half in one bite. Well maybe not that but it was still a gargantuan creature with teeth the size of Brock Lesnar's fists. This thing wouldn't even chew you. It would just swallow you whole and then fart your skeleton out into the dark cold ocean. At number 1 on our list we have Giant Eyeball. A mysterious giant eyeball washed onto the shore of a Florida beach back in October of 2012. I don't know any other kind of giant eyeball other than a mysterious one. There's no super common regular giant eyeball just lying around. But this is also Florida. This is the state where people smoke crack at weddings and kiss alligators on the lips. So maybe it's a little more common over there. Well this giant eyeball was found by Gino Cavacci and he didn't know what the hell to make of it so he took it home and then stuck it in his freezer. Then he called the cops and the cops came in and told him we don't do giant eyeballs on the beach. You have to call the wildlife people. And then he called the wildlife people and they were like what the hell is that? And he was like I don't know I brought it to you guys to try and figure out what it is. And then some people were like maybe it's a sea monster and other people were like no it's probably from a marlin. And I think in the end no one really knew what the hell it was. But just so you know there's giant eyeballs out there just laying around the beach sometime. Kicking off our list at number 10. A mammoth tusk. Scientists are currently trying to bring the woolly mammoth back to life, so it's fitting that we throw this recent discovery on our list here. Back in 2019, scientists from Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute, they were poking around the ocean floor. They were poking around 10,000 feet, not too far off the coast of California, and they found what they thought was an elephant tusk. Now that by itself would be a pretty neat discovery. Animal remains in the deep sea, let's go, that's great. No, this one was even better. We found a mammoth tusk. At first the team only grabbed a small sample, but last year in July they were able to return and get the entire thing. Voila! It belonged to a Colombian mammoth. Those were mammoths that didn't have a lot of hair. They didn't need it. They lived in North America so things got a little warm sometimes. 10,000 years after they died off we're still finding their tusks. What do you think about bringing them back to life? Should we do that? Sound off below. I, I say no. Definitely not. They're way too big and scary. Also they died before. They'll probably die again. Sorry. I don't know. Number 9. Giant Phantom Jellyfish. Beautiful, yes. Terrifying and for sure an alien, also yes. This beast was discovered back in 2021 in, you guessed it, Monterey Bay. The classic spot apparently for sea monsters. The research team sent in a deep sea robot to take a look into the abyss and they discovered this phantom giant jellyfish again. Yeah, I said again. Originally, this jellyfish was documented back in 1899, living at depths of 3,000 to 13,000 feet. It's, yeah, more than fair. She's hard to catch. Who is she down there? Never know. But luckily, we got a video of her in action last year. Check it out. This is why I don't ever go in the oceans. Ever. Cheers. Number eight. Deep sea anglerfish. These guys are so scary, we have to talk about them. Living at depths of over 6,000 feet, the deep sea anglerfish lives in complete darkness. Like, 
Vin Diesel in Pitch Black. It was first discovered back in 1833 when it washed ashore in Greenland and was then taken to Johann Christopher Hangman Reinhardt in Denmark. It was first referred to as the football fish or the man gobbler. Great names, okay. Female anglerfish have a glowing lure at the top of their head. That's how we recognize them. It's like the whoop thing, right, in Finding Nemo. It's scary and it's something I'm glad hides at the bottom of our oceans, but it's needed for their survival. The light is created due to bioluminescent bacteria. Thousands of fish have it, and in the deep sea, anglerfish uses it to hunt. It draws fish in right in front of its massive, scary mouth, and then just, help. They see the disco light, and then moments later, they see another light, the light of the fish lords. The spiny dorsal fin hangs over their head. It's called an esca, it's an organ, and it emits photophore light. It's made method of hunting, which is pretty badass. It kind of has to be because it has no arms or anything. It's just a big scary face moving around the ocean. And as for prey, well, she'll take what she can get, no matter how big. Well, they ate it head first, because this thing probably came in to look at the light that the anglerfish has, and then the anglerfish grabbed it and then sort of swallowed it in its stomach has expanded to sort of fit it all in. The deep sea anglerfish can expand their jaw and stomach and they can eat prey that's twice the size of them. Although they often eat shrimps, snails, and other smaller fish. But once you're in, you're tucked, you're not going anywhere. You're screwed. The males actually aren't equipped with the natural lure of light, and when they reach adulthood, their digestive system no longer functions. So it needs one of these leading ladies to survive. I'll let that speak for itself. Number seven, old coral reefs or dying coral reefs, this one's actually kind of sad. After all, the list is dark discoveries. These are all scary or dark, literal darkness for some of them. Back in 2009, after a four week expedition to explore the deep ocean, just southwest of Tasmania, scientists found deep water coral reefs, which is exciting at first until they realized that these coral reefs are dying. They're on their way out. So now there needs to be more research done into why exactly these reefs are dying. We would like to know that. That's kind of something we're working on currently. If the reason they're dying happens to extend to the shallow reefs as well, this could cause massive problems for both marine life and us, our human life. Scientists need to figure out whether the coral was dying because of the ocean warming up, maybe it was disease, or perhaps it was an increase in ocean acidity. Whatever the case is, if it extends into shallower water, it's bad news for us. 25% of marine life would lose their habitat. The coastal fishing industry Industry would be affected, of course, so no more fish and chip specials. Save the ocean, you know? For Red Lobster's sake, let's smarten up and save the ocean. Number six, Chuck Lagoon. This lagoon was Japan's main base during the war, but come 1944, the United States launched an attack, which some deem as Japan's Pearl Harbor, where 60 ships were sunk and around 250 planes as well. So for 70 years, there's been a massive graveyard, literally, just sitting in the depths of the Pacific, and it wasn't until recently where we got a good look at these haunting artifacts from history. This photographer went down, took some photos, and said it was one of the scariest shoots ever. They described the atmosphere Filled, of course, with you know human skulls, remains, gas masks, bullets. Obviously, it was haunting to look at. Nobody wanted to go down, so that's when we send in a submarine. That's when we send in a drone because we don't like to look at skulls and picking up stuff out of the sand. We don't like to do that. Nobody was expecting these artifacts to be that well preserved after all this time, too. Like all these things, even a mammoth tusk, these are all in pristine condition almost. It's like the ocean's haunting and unexplored. Hmm. Number five, holes. If you have trypophobia, you may want to skip this one or face your fears together. I don't like holes either. I'm diving in, let's do it. Off the coast of Big Sur, California, which is a real place and not just a Mac update, a survey revealed about 15,000 holes on the bottom of the ocean and they're all the same size, which is weird. They all measure up to be 11 meters wide and one meter deep. The team at Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute our, our friends, they found about 15,000 of these and then they found 5,000 more that were even bigger. The little guys are micro depressions in the earth and the big ones are pock marks. Initially, scientists here thought that it was methane underneath the seafloor coming out to say hi and you know, leaving a big crater, big poof. So rovers went down there, tests were done, no methane. In fact, there hasn't even been any methane for 50,000 years. So what's going on here? These craters are doing a pretty good job with the ecosystem though, wildly, because now there's deep sea creatures just living in them. They even found a whale skull just laying in one. Imagine being a crab, coming home to that, I throw up. I go, a little bubble of puke in the ocean. Number four, MV Derbyshire. This ship was twice the size of the Titanic, but James Cameron didn't make a movie about it, so you may not have heard about it. Let me fill you in. I'm not James Cameron, but I'll do my best. The MV Derbyshire was the biggest British registered merchant ship of all time to sink. That's an odd brag when you think about it. But she was assembled back in 1976 and lost in 1980 on route from Canada to Japan. A Mayday distress call was never issued and the ship was following proper ocean routes with weather routing companies, so they were doing all the right things, yet somehow it sank. 
September 15th, 1980, a search began for the missing ship and crew, but six days later, the search was called off. Nothing was found, not even a clue, honestly. The ship was declared lost. The sister ship of the Derbyshire ended up sinking as well due to a deck cracking, so the families urged officials to search again. Come 1994, the Derbyshire was found. Number three, a huge squid. I'll talk about this thing every chance I get. I hope you haven't seen or heard about this because I slept a lot better the less I knew, honestly. The big fin squid, the BFS, the big squid, is rarely seen, hence why it's on our list here today. It actually lurks in many oceans, hiding in the deep. The big fin squid lives in the permanent dark zones of the ocean around 1,200 meters or 4,000 feet deep in the sea. So the guy can't see anything. He's blind down there, as are most of these monsters. On November 11th, 2007, an ROV was searching around the deepest, darkest waters in the Gulf of Mexico, and lucky for us, they got one on film. Yeah, 23 feet long. I know you're probably wondering as soon as you saw that video. Depth perception is like, oh, maybe it's small, maybe it's this. Nope, stupidly large. They look like balloons, scary, haunting balloons, just casually floating, watching you. I hate how calm it looks too. It looks like it locked onto you, like it's like kinda following your moves. Is this a boss battle? This feels like a boss battle. Let's move on, this guy's scary. Number two, Siphonophore. Siphonophores, okay, where do I even begin? This is a real thing, not an alien? Okay, cool. Upon first glance, this appears to be a single multicellular organism, but they're actually an entire colony of polyps and medusoids that are collectively known as a zooid. Yep, I'm saying real words, I'm not just making them up. A few years ago, scientists found the longest siphonophore ever. They found it and it was 154 feet long. If you thought that last creature was long, this thing is stupid. Just a huge long piece of spaghetti just floating around in the ocean. But really, it's, it's actually not spaghetti. It's a bunch of different little creatures all working together. Reading up about this thing, there was a quote that I read and it said, we at least need to know what's down there. No, we don't. Leave it alone. Leave everything, this, leave it alone down there. I can't even deal with a spider in the apartment. Where do I even begin with this? And finally, number one, an ancient city. We'll end this list with a recent, recent discovery. The lost Egyptian city of Heraklion was found after disappearing under the Mediterranean Sea 1200 years ago. Now this city has a bit of history behind it, you know, being founded in the eighth century BC and all, and researchers believe Heraklion was the port that you'd arrive in if you were to travel back then. Well recently, last summer in 2021, more to this ancient sunken city was found in Egypt, and it's changing history, dare I say. This was led by the European Institute for Underwater Archaeology, this sunken military vessel, this 25 meter ship was found in this sunken ancient city. In another part of this lost city, remains of a Greek funerary area was also discovered, dating back to around the 4th century BC. So this discovery connects the historical dots for us. Greek merchants living in the ancient Egyptian city. This tells us that the Greeks settled here during the late Pharaoh dynasties, which is wild. We're literally just connecting all these pieces of this historical puzzle. And also we're finding treasure at the same time, so it's not all scary fish. We just need to send cameras and submarines underwater everywhere and just check under every shell. What a wild list this was. Kicking off the list at number 10, SS Garisopa. We'll kick off this deep sea part three with a shipwreck. Whenever it comes to underwater stuff, I think I have thalassophobia. These were hard to look at and look into, rather. I got chills looking at these photos, honestly. The SS Garisopa was once a thriving British cargo ship. Back in 1941, during World War II, the cargo ship was en route, returning from India carrying a pretty nice amount of silver. It was a lot of silver, an, an alarming amount of silver. A storm rolled in, so the the captain made a quick decision knowing what was on board to avoid the rough waters as much as possible. So the ship changed direction and started heading towards Ireland. Again, this was 1941 during World War II, so not a great time to head that direction. The ship was spotted by a German plane and a U-boat later claimed the lives of the SS Garisopa's 85 passengers. News traveled quickly and once the war came to an end, a few divers checked out the area. There was nothing. Now fast forward to 2011, Odyssey Marines team found the ship. 14,000 feet below the surface, surrounded by just pure darkness. The team kept around 80% of the treasure found and the rest went to Her Majesty's treasury. In case you were wondering, there was around $150 million worth of treasure found. Yeah, if you can do it, then go grab it, sure. It's like one of those things where someone's like, hey, you want $150 million, go into this deep, dark, scary thing. Would you do it? No, my answer is no. Number nine, Ram's Horn Squid. This little squishy dude was discovered around 3,000 feet below the surface and scientists cannot stop talking about the way he moves. Look at him, he looks like a really slow submarine, which is pretty amazing when you think about the uh, Schmitz 
ocean ROV that's down there getting this footage. It's also a submarine. How funny is that? He's looking at him. He's looking at them. They're like, what? He's like, what? They're all just both wiggling, trying to balance each other out. His body acts like a submarine's ballast does. Fluids and gases shift around, and in return, this little guy can float up and down whilst wiggling his toes. Look at him. I never thought a squid would be cute until now. Didn't know that was a possibility, yet here we are. Part three, most amazing, cute squid. Number eight, Catherine Sullivan. Not really a deep sea discovery, but I mean, when talking about all these discoveries, you gotta ask, who goes down there? Who does the thing, right? When an entertainer wins an Oscar, Emmy, Tony, and Grammy, we call that an EGOT. Fun little title only a handful of artists can claim. But what about somebody who's been to both space and the deepest part of our earth? What do we call them? Well, so far, them is just one individual. Her name's Catherine Sullivan. The former NASA astronaut decided to change up directions for this trip, so she joined Victor Viscavo on one of his eight trips to the deepest known point on Earth. July 7th, 2020, Catherine Sullivan officially became the first person to do both. Go out there and then down there. That's crazy. Your Fitbit's like, what are you doing? What's happening? How many steps is this? What can we call this impressive title? He got a deep got? A deep got go-getter? A deep go-getter? Yeah, you're a deep go-getter. That sounds awful. We're doing our best here. Maybe part four will have a fun name. It's impressive. It's so impressive my ears hurt thinking about all these commutes. Bravo. Hats off to you. Number seven, holy grail of shipwrecks. Okay, back to shipwrecks. It's hard to read up on these shipwrecks sometimes, well all the time, because on one hand it's fascinating to discover parts of our history we thought was once lost forever. Of course we find tons of treasure that's always fun and noteworthy, but we're also exploring the scene of a horrible wreck every single time. It's quite grim, not on paper. In 1708 the San Jose Galleon was heading to Spain from Colombia, but when the British attacked, the San Jose sank to the ocean floor and nearly all 600 crew members lost their lives. Yeah, dark history. In 2015 the ship was found with around 17 to 22 billion dollars worth of plundered valuables. See, back in the 80s, Gloka Mora Company claimed they had found the ship. Colombia was lacking the financial and technological resources to dive down and actually get it, so they agreed to give GMC 35% of the findings. In 1984, they then handed the rights over to an American company, Sea Search Armada. Then the game changed. Since then, and still to this day, legal battles have been unfolding over this lost treasure. COVID delayed it quite a bit, so if you can hold your breath for a really long time, it's still waiting there. No one knows what to do with it yet. I'm like, see ya, be right back. Number six, the Vasa shipwreck. Back in 1628, the Vasa sunk within 20 minutes of setting sail, and it claimed the lives of 30 souls on board. How tragic is that? Only 20 minutes and it was gone. The Swedish Navy launched the ship August 10th, 1628, and it was once considered a high-tech warship, even referred to as spectacular. So what happened? How did this thing sink in 20 minutes? That's crazy. Well, the first rush of wind caught it off guard, and it swayed a bit. The second rush of wind sank it. There's gotta be more. There was a crash around and everything to send it off, but the 64 bronze cannons that were installed during the rushed process of building the ship were too heavy. That's why it sank. And the lack of oxygen in the water allowed for its rediscovery to continue its story. The Vasa was built with carvings all around the wood. Carvings centered around the king at the time, King Gustav II. So when the wreck was rediscovered in 1961, 95% of the wood was still intact. So it still tells the story. Number five, under the ice. This dark discovery was pretty recent. Recent as in October 2021, the Hakon Project is one I would never sign up for personally, but I'm surprised it's taken this long to do something along these lines. The Hagon Project is a group of around 30 scientists. They teamed up to send a deep sea robot 13,000 feet below the icy surface of the Arctic Ocean. This was the first time we got to see the hidden volcanic vents that have been hiding for centuries, because obviously it's that deep and that cold, and now we have the resources and people who are brave enough to go and camp out in the Arctic to go explore. That's crazy. Number four, ancient Greek shipwreck. I remember hearing about this back in 2018, so I'm excited I get to throw it on a List. The oldest shipwreck discovered in the Black Sea. It looks like it sank 50 years ago, but actually this ship is from 400 BC. It's an ancient Greek trading vessel and it's not very large, but somehow this thing is very mighty. 2,400 years later, over a mile below the surface, the lack of oxygen again actually preserved this ship. That's why it looks not ancient. John Adams, principal investigator with the Black Sea Marine Archaeology Project, describes the findings as something he never thought was even possible. Yeah, more than fair. That long ago, like we're still trying to figure out the pyramids. We're like, oh my god, this thing's just chilling there the whole time. Just a fish is staring at it. This discovery changed what we knew about seafaring in the ancient world. The oldest intact shipwreck known to mankind. That's not a bad title. Another 2,000 years we'll find nothing but plastic on the bottom of our oceans. Number three, underwater river. We've heard about this one at some point I'm sure, but how is this even a real thing? How is this possible? What are we looking at? What is this? Back in 2016, researchers working in the Black Sea found these very strong currents. Currents of water flowing at the bottom
bottom of the sea like its own river almost. If this 115 foot deep river was on land instead of, well, under the Black Sea, it would be ranked number six in the world for the amount of volume alone that's constantly rushing through it. So pretty impressive. The river carries heavy sediments along the seafloor, hence why it makes those grooves over time. And yeah, over time, those currents carve out their own path and now it's massive and extremely powerful and unstoppable. But luckily for us, you need a deep sea rover to take a good look. So you're not gonna fall in anytime soon. Number two, deep waste. I mentioned some deep sea plastic on this channel before, but this 2021 discovery is just a new low, pun intended. Right off the coast of LA, hiding around 4,000 feet below the ocean's surface, sitting there for quite a long time were literal barrels of garbage, just waste. The plume of evil coming off of these things also, it looks like a nuclear wasteland. Probably because it is a literal nuclear wasteland. How horrible is that? There weren't 30 or 40 of these barrels also, in case you're wondering, there were thousands. Around 27,000 were found. Two weeks of searching with subs, what a sad expedition that must have been, oh my. These barrels were dropping into the ocean around 1947 to around 1961, that's the window of time. You'd think after barrel 5,000, somebody would be like, ah, this feels wrong, I don't know. And finally, number one, beneath a glacier. We had to end this part three on some new footage from the bottom of an Antarctic glacier. And this glacier also, in case you're wondering, is the size of Florida. So if you're imagining like a big ice cube, it's a bit bigger than that, just a little bit. This is like finding the bottom of a continent. This thing is massive. And we set a rover underneath all of it. How scary is that? If it were to collapse, our sea levels would rise 10 feet, just to give you an idea of how big it is. And in 2019, researchers drilled 2,300 feet right through the Thwaites Glacier and dropped a robot with a camera down and then they just roamed around. And they saw this. Hold your breath. This is the first time we've ever seen the grounding zone of a massive glacier. There's only one meter of space between the bottom of the glacier and the rocky seafloor. Could you go down there? I don't think I could. I would swim underneath it and pretend like I'm lifting it up, you know? Just kidding. I wouldn't even get into the submarine to go down this hole. Not a chance. Also, can we not drill through a glacier the size of Florida? Just sounds like a bad idea. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Maybe leave this project alone. Kicking off the list at number 10, Fangtooth. A nice scary name off the hop. Nice, we love it. This first deep sea discovery comes from the fine researchers at Monterey Bay Research Institute, MBARI. Every time you see a deep sea video that blows your mind, more often than not, it's the MBARI crew. They like to go deep down and get some scary stuff. The fang tooth are often found around 1,700 feet deep. They live in the deep dark depths of the Marianas Trench. I really hope they stay there. In relation to their body size, this teeth, the largest teeth in the ocean, easily. I mean, look at this. You kinda, it's kinda hard not to make fun of them. These guys have a special little pocket in the roof of their mouths, which are used to store their teeth so they actually, you know, close their mouths. In case you're wondering, you know, how it's so big and all. They store them. They have a trunk for their teeth. That's so alien. Why are fish so alien? The fang tooth has been described by the Ambari team as a face only a mother could love. What a roast that is. They don't have very good eyesight at all, but again, with teeth like that, who needs eyes, really? These guys hunt just by bumping into their prey. They sense vibrations and movements in the water, just like Daredevil. Number nine, Grand Rojo Jellyfish. First discovered in the mid 90s, although they weren't officially categorized as a new species until 2003, the Grand Rojo Jellyfish. Yeah, for 13 years, we were just confused on what we were looking at or what to call them. Not only did their discovery come with a new species classification, but also a new subfamily. So yeah, it was a pretty big deal. Worth the wait, I would say. The species was originally called Big Ugly, which again, unnecessary roast for a deep sea fish. Let's just say big scary. Can we say big scary? That's better. Why does it have to be big ugly? Eventually they landed on big red, which is nice. We'll, we'll take that. These jellyfish are the largest of all sea jellies, obviously. They grow to around 76 centimeters in diameter and they have four to seven arms, like thick fleshy arms, rather than, you know, weak tentacles that we're used to seeing on jellyfish. Oh, they're so... I could be a jellyfish. I have jellyfish movements. While most jellies are transparent, these guys are red all over because, you know, it's haunting that way. And because of their deep sea habitat, there's still so much we don't know about them. And only 23 have ever been found and identified in real life. So the research is currently lacking, to be honest. Scientists are doing their best to get us some more clips, but, um, you know, they're rare. They're like aliens. Let them, it's gonna take some time to find them all, like Pokemon. Give us a minute. Number eight, the barrel eye fish. This thing looks like an alien spaceship. I love this. Whatever fish this is, I want one. I'm kidding, leave it, we should leave it. Two green alien eggs piloting a weird ship. This deep sea troublemaker is called a barrel eye fish. It's also known as a spook fish, which makes more sense. They look like a Halloween decoration, for starters. The main attraction here, of course, are their large protruding telescopic eyes that are stored inside its transparent head. Yeah, take a minute to just kind of take that in. Its big head is see-through. We can see anything on this guy's mind. Just a fish dome made of soft, see-through tissue. We love that. They're unable to withstand change in pressure, so it's a good idea, very good idea, to leave the barrel eye fish where they belong. 
or else their heads will just, yeah, it'll be ugly. After their initial discovery, the only way people who hadn't seen them in the deep, who wanted to see them, was through drawings. If I found a see-through fish and had to draw it for historians, I'd be like, hang on, no, uh, what? I would be so screwed. They're often found around 800 meters deep in the ocean, pretty motionless as well. Again, very alien-like. Just sitting there on autopilot, just hovering. Number seven, the vampire squid. The vampire squid is the last surviving member of its order and has similarities with both the squid as well as the octopus. So basically, it's the most threatening animal I can imagine, honestly, and haunting to look at, of course. Also, its name is vampire squid, so obviously something's afoot here. Obviously, it's a little bit dangerous. Two of these creatures somehow meeting in the middle. Just like a jellyfish, the vampire squid has a gelatinous body that helps it move quicker through the depths of the sea. The vampire squid is covered in light producing organs called photophores, which they're able to use in a way that produces disorienting light flashes, you know, to confuse its prey. Yeah, vampire disco attack. It'll just flash lights and dance in your face and they'll be like, oh shh. While the vampire squid doesn't have ink to blast out at its enemies, it does have the ability to shoot out a bioluminescent mucus. Glowy puke. That's almost worse than ink, in my humble opinion. That's way worse than ink. Also, this squid is able to regenerate its arms. So I think this all goes to say that if you're in a fight with a vampire squid, well, I really hope you came prepared because he definitely is. He's growing arms, he's dancing in your face, he's ready to go. Number six, predatory tunicate. The predatory tunicate is like the Venus flytrap of the deep sea. Doesn't that sound haunting already? Predatory tunicate is straight up one of the most unique creatures I've ever learned about working on this channel, honestly. Looks like something you'd fight in Super Mario Sunshine. How is that a real thing? What in the hell? They start off life like tadpoles do. Then they swim until they find a perfect spot, either along a canyon wall or the seafloor or something, something sturdy. Once they found their spot, they plant themselves using a natural adhesive that they produce. Once planted, they will undergo a huge change, clearly. And this is where they'll stay for the rest of their lives. They're super picky about where they set up camp because, well, they're there forever. This is their new home, essentially. On the side of a rock right next to Coral Lane. Come visit, let's do it. In order to find the perfect spot, they need to make sure that both the chemicals and the water in that area, as well as the temperature of the water, is just, just right. And unfortunately, if these guys do get moved from their location and chose to make their home somewhere else, they will die. So it's imperative that we leave them alone. Know what I'm saying? Don't be poking anything in the ocean. Hit that thumbs up, don't be hitting fish. They basically wait for food to drift on by and then just like a Venus flytrap, when they get their meal in their mouths, their mouths will close automatically until they're done digesting. Then they'll just go and then open back up. Predatory tunicate is a point of study in the medical world because they actually have been known to help with more serious medical conditions. So as scary and weird as it is to look at, it's, he's literally saving lives. Number five, snapping shrimp. I have to include a snapping shrimp because I always see these guys pop up on Reddit when I'm scrolling through in the dead of the night and these guys will pop up and they'll haunt me. Snapping shrimp pack the hardest punch. They look nice, but they'll hit you before you even blink. Will Smith style, you won't even see it coming. Its punch is so powerful that it creates a sonic boom underwater. Here's a clip of a mantis shrimp punching through a fisherman's gear. Ah. Ow, that really hurt. This dude grabbed a hold of my booty, put a hole in this booty. He has no idea what he just pulled out of the depths of the sea. This thing just punched through skin and gear, just like that, and he's tiny. Pistol shrimp hit their prey at 100 kilometers an hour, and in doing so, a large air bubble is created, and because of this, you know, Mike Tyson shrimp, he's so quick with the right hook, the following pop is around 200 decibels. So should the mantis shrimp miss that first punch, the sound alone will stun their prey. Or if they're lucky, that sound will kill them, instead of, you know, into their head. Number four, the long arm squid. Ooh, long arm boys, here we are. The big fin squid is not often seen, and honestly, thank goodness for that, because they're so, so terrifying to look at, as are the other things on this list. They can be found in many different oceans, but they live in the permanently dark zone, so you don't have to worry about your foot touching one anytime soon. They live at around 1,219 meters, or 4,000 feet deep in the sea. On November 11th, 2007, as an ROV was searching around the dark waters in the Gulf of Mexico, it was able to catch one of these guys on film. While there's still a ton that remains a mystery about these elusive creatures, it's believed that they grow to be around 23 feet long. Yeah, they're really long. The real creepy stance that these guys have also, how they're so still, not a fan. So still and so large. Big forbidden deep sea spaghettis. No thank you. Number three, giant isopods. Big nope on these ones, here we go. I can't do deep sea anything, so these videos are always exciting to me. My palms get sweaty when I'm making these scripts for you. These giant isopods, so scary. These large crustaceans can reach lengths around 15 inches, and while it's not the biggest deep sea creature of all time, it's still pretty insane for what, 
this thing is. For example, this footage comes from the NOAA team. This was five years ago in the Gulf of Mexico. Take a look. Yeah, you thought bugs were gross. These things can swim so fast and then just attach themselves onto your back. Ugh, I'm never swimming again. That's so quick and so gross. Little legs. Oh, so I hate those legs. Giant isopods get their size from what is known as deep sea gigantism, which is an evolutionary tendency for deep sea creatures to grow larger than their shallow water counterparts. It isn't exactly clear why this happens, but we see it in giant shrimp as well. It happens and we're like, <laughs> what? It is thought that maybe it's because of the cold temperatures, which may increase cell life and lifespan, but still we're pretty clueless at this point. Giant isopods are scavengers, which usually wait to collect scraps of what is left over from another predator's meal. Yeah, then they just scurry over with their big giant many legs and then just latch on. Number two, deep sea anglerfish. I'm glad I put deep sea in there in case, you know, you somehow forgot about these. Look, these fish are big and scary and they have tentacles flying out of them. They have the disco ball of death floating in front of their big scary mouths. We know that about these deep sea horrors by now. But what makes the angler fish so unique in the ocean world is that the males will be attached for life. And I mean that in a literal sense. Male angler fish do not look the same at all as the female. They are tiny, they can't even lift groceries. Look at these little dudes. So what they'll do is they'll find a suitable mate, bite into her stomach, their skin will then go and fuse together and their blood will all be the same blood. How insane is that? Only a few years ago, we got footage of a mating pair and it's crazy, check this out. The males are much smaller than the females and they can survive purely on the nutrients from the female's blood. Yeah, they're parasitic. Their entire life goal is to find a leading lady to do all the work. Yeah, must be nice, eh? Easy. To be fair, look at this guy. He can't hunt. This guy can't even book his own doctor's appointment. Think he's gonna go find dinner? No way. And finally, number one, the Gulf of Mexico shipwreck. Yeah, I'm gonna include a Gulf of Mexico shipwreck for number one because we talked about so many Gulf of Mexico horrors. I saw a ghost ship as a kid and that was it. I was scared forever, never going on a boat in the sea ever again. The Gulf of Mexico is no stranger to shipwrecks. There's about 4,000 laying down there right now. That's what happens when you steal buckets of gold and then you try and flee on a dinghy. You end up sinking a lot more often than not. So when ex-con oil workers found this sunken ship 26,000 feet below the surface, they were pumped. They immediately told the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management, who later tried to explore the wreck, but during its first attempts, equipment kept failing. The sub they were planning on using as well kept malfunctioning right before departure. Video would cut out, sonar wouldn't work, so they sent the Navy out there. They sent a research sub as well, but the rover wasn't operational. The arms were too tiny as well, so they had no way of really taking a look into this thing and discovering it. That's for sure haunted. That's why I put it as number one. That is a literal graveyard. Doesn't matter if it's below the water or above here. I wouldn't go into the woods and start exploring an area where like a plane crash happened. No chance. That's the same under the sea. Leave it alone. That's just bad juju. Those are shipwrecks. What are we doing?